Whenever I record in Cubase, I always use the built-in metronome to establish the tempo of the project, but occasionally I'll get projects from other people that were not recorded to a metronome, and then if I bring those tracks into Cubase to do editing, I would much rather have those tracks in a Cubase project that can be set to measures, bars, and beats instead of a time-based project like minutes and seconds and frames. So what you can do is you can take a percussive track, like this will not work on violins or uh, double basses or saxophones, so typically you'll want to do the tempo detection with a drum track. So what I'm going to do is in this particular project, I'm going to use one of the tracks and analyze it for the tempo. But let's listen to it right now. If I press play, I'll hear the drums, but then I'm going to turn the click track on, and when you listen to the click track, you can tell that it's way off of the tempo of the audio files. Now I'll turn the click on. See how they don't line up at all? What I would much rather do is have the tempo detection remap the tempo of Cubase so that the measures, bars, and beats follow that audio track. So here's how we do it. I'm going to highlight a track that has a lot of the percussion in it, and in this case I'm going to choose the overhead drum track. This has all of the drums in it, and it will make it easier for the tempo detection process to find all the right hits. So with that audio event highlighted, I'm going to go under the project pull-down menu and select tempo detection. And that brings up the tempo detection dialog box. Now this is a pretty simple tool to use. All I'm going to do is click the analyze button and what it's going to do is go through and find all those drum hits and it's going to assume that every drum hit is on a measure, bar, or beat. When the analysis is complete, you you'll notice that it has added a couple of new tracks to the project. There's a time signature track and a tempo track. And the tempo information on the tempo track was determined by that analysis of the tempo detection. So now when we press play on the Cubase project, you'll notice that the tempo of Cubase follows the audio track. Now there's a couple of other things that we'll want to change. You'll notice that it's counting in double time, so what we'll want to do is come back to the tempo detection dialog box and divide the tempo by two so that we get quarter notes instead of eighth notes. Let's take a listen to it now. So now we've got the tempo right, it's right around 70 beats per minute. And then the next thing that we'll want to do is go to our signature track and change the time signature to 4-4. Four, four. So I'm going to type the number 1 key on my top row of number buttons to get back to my selection tool, and I'm going to double click on that 1-4 event and type in 4-4, four four. and now I have the project time signature established as 4-4. Four, four. Now, something funny is about to happen, or is it? You'll notice that the drummer stops playing for a couple of measures. What will the tempo detection do now? Well, it's pretty smart. It establishes a guess in between those measures and will start the tempo over again when it detects the next downbeat. So let's take a listen to what happens. Pretty killer. Now, like I said in the beginning, it really takes a percussive track like drums to perform the tempo detection correctly. Don't try this with synth pads or guitar tracks because they're just not going to be percussive enough. It really only works with drums or complete mixes that have drums in them. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up a project to record multiple inputs simultaneously.